we go. All right. I'm lost without my PQ. I guess I can just use that one later. All right, so we'll look at the scripture again. Now, I actually, you know, every week, sometimes I find myself thinking, what should I speak on? What does God want us to learn? And it's sometimes difficult to come up with a topic every week. And then Deacon Ahn sends me a text message. Hello. And then I send him the text on like a Tuesday. So I have to be thinking about it ahead of time. Uh, so anyway, this week I was thinking about two, two different things, and we'll probably talk about the first one today, and then we'll talk about the second one next week, but uh, I was thinking about the word rooted. Rooted. What does rooted mean? And the word, you know, the word rooted, you know, we look out at the trees, any trees or plants have roots. You know, the roots go down. How do you say roots in Korean? Uri. They go down in into the soil to get the water, right? To get the water and the minerals for food. Uh, and some trees, some trees have very deep roots. Some trees have kind of shallow roots. Uh, recently, I saw an article on the internet about the sequoia tree. You know, have you heard about the large, the tallest trees in the world? The redwood trees in California. And then there are also some also very tall, wide trees. They're almost as wide as this stage called sequoia, sequoia trees in California. And one of the tall trees had just fallen over, completely fallen over. And they don't, they actually don't have, they have pretty shallow roots for the being big trees, right? And the wind could blow them over, whatever. But then there are other trees. There are other trees. Have you ever seen a, a mangrove swamp? Mangroves, mangrove trees grow near like beaches. And they have lots of roots that go out. And maybe trees in the desert, sometimes trees in the desert. The roots have to go down to find the water. All right. But uh, it's very important for trees to have roots. And it's very important for us as Christians to have roots. And, you know, roots, roots are not just for water. They're for water, they're for food, but they're also like for stability, right? You know, you could say your legs are kind of like roots. They keep you standing straight, right? So we're going to talk about that. So let's go to the scripture again. Let's look at the scripture together. All right. So then, just as you receive Christ, let's read this together. So then, just as you receive Christ, Jesus is Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you are taught and overflowing with thankfulness. A mistake there. See to it that no one takes you captive to the law of the deceptive philosophy which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. Now, this probably we'll talk more about this next week. But I was also thinking this week about the fact that you know the Bible warns against false teaching. Here it says there's hollow and deceptive philosophy. There's philosophy out in the world, or philosophy in some books or on TV. Philosophy that's not really related to the Bible. And there's another verse. Let's go to the next one. Here's another verse that mentions the similar idea. All right. uh, have nothing to do with godless myths. A myth is something that's really not true, but it's kind of a story that we use to explain some history or something like that. And old wives' tales. What are wives' tales? Does anybody know what a wives' tale is? A wives' tale could be something like, you know, eat this food and it will help you. But sometimes it's not true. Sometimes it is true. Uh, a wives' tale could be like, uh, don't... Don't let a black cat, or if a black cat 
runs across your path, you'll have bad luck. Uh, kind of a, a thing that we think might be true, but it's not really true, right? All right. Then it says, rather train yourself to be godly. We're supposed to train ourselves like athletes. I mentioned this before. For physical training is of some value, so you know, doing exercise is some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both this life and the next life, the life to come. But here we have to be careful of godless myths, old wives' tales that aren't true, and then the other verse said, like, human philosophy, hollow, deceptive philosophy. And uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But let's talk about the first part of the verse. Let's go to our verses. Let's go to the next, next slide. So this is what we're going to talk about mainly one and two today. And maybe we'll talk about number three next week. But as you received him, walk in him. So we have to talk about how do we receive Christ? It, you know, we have to know how, do, how did we receive Christ? You have to remember, how did you receive Christ? And then how do you continue that, right? Number two, uh, as I was talking about trees, be rooted. Every one of us needs to be rooted in God's Word, in a life with Jesus, in prayer, and so forth, right? And established is another word. Established means, you know, you, you start something, you build something, and it's firm. It's strong. You know, like this building is established on this land, and it's a strong building, we hope, <laughs> you know, okay? And then, of course, you have to stay away from these lies, these false philosophies, tradition, wives' tales. All right, ne all right let's go to the next one. All right, huh. you might find this interesting, or maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> all right, so these guys don't have much clothing on, but what, what are these guys doing? Who, who are these people? All right, sumo wrestlers. Also, I have a couple pictures of serum, serum wrestlers. But, um, now, when, when sumo wrestlers, for some reason I was thinking about this yesterday, when sumo wrestlers fight, basically, it's two guys that are very, very heavy and very strong, and they come together, and one guy has to push the other guy out of the circle, or push him over, right? And it's very powerful. And, but you can see, you know, they have to have strong legs, right? You know, in fact, you know, they kind of do the, the thing at the beginning, right? They do the kind of the uh, movement at the beginning. But the guy who wins, the guy who wins usually has strong legs, and then he can push, push the other guy, and he has good skills to move his hands to push. But you have to have, you could say you have to have be rooted. They have to be rooted and established with their legs, right? So next one. So see this guy, he's standing on his legs, and this guy's just flying through the air, right? So this guy who's standing up is more established. He's more rooted in the ground. He's not falling over, right? Okay, next one. So here we have the Korean wrestling. So you can see this guy, his legs are stuck in the sand. He's not moving much. I mean, of course, of course, sometimes, sometimes the winner also moves, but he's controlling himself, right? This guy's falling over. He's flying through the air, right? He's not rooted. All right, next one. One, one more picture. So see, now this guy, he's got one leg. is rooted. This guy has one leg, but he's falling over, right? So the guy in the back is more established, more rooted. All right, next one. All right. So we can think about that. Now, the first point is, how did we receive Christ? How do you receive Christ? Well, first of all, of course, you hear, you hear the message. You hear that Jesus died for you and your sins are forgiven. And we, by faith, we go, I think this is true. I know this is true. I want this to be true. I... I want my sins forgiven, and we confess our sin. We confess our sin. We come to Jesus, we confess our sin. Say, I'm a sinner, I need you. I need you, God. And we are humble, and we are willing to learn. 
We're all willing to learn. When we're a Christian, when you're a Christian, when you become a Christian, a new Christian, you, you, you say, I want to read the Bible. I want to study the Bible. I'm hungry for the Bible. I'm thirsty for the Bible. It's like putting your roots down and saying, you know, I need to drink this water of the Word, you know, and get it into my mind and into my heart, right? And we also want to obey. Last week I was saying, you know, God lives in us. So then we do things to love people, right? And we believe His Word, and we obey it. So it's, it's, it's humility and learning and obeying, right? And receiving what God has for us. Okay, so next. Now, I just want to mention... I just want to turn off all cell phones. Alright, here's a Greek word. Here's a Greek word. Paralambano. Can you say that? Paralambano. Paralambano. I don't know if that's the exact pronunciation, but um, this word means to join one's self, to join yourself, like join yourself to Jesus. And you also make Jesus your companion. And it also means you don't reject Jesus and you don't disobey Jesus. So you Obey Jesus, right? So this this word is basically uh, referring to you know when we received Christ, paralambano. You receive him, you become his companion, his friend. Is he guides you? He's your God, right? And you join yourself to him, and you of course obey him. All right, next one. So then you know. We join ourselves to Jesus, and then we have to walk with Jesus. All right. So here's another Greek word: uh, peripateo. Peripateo. All right. Peripateo means to make your way. Make your way means like you know, walking through the forest or walking through something. Uh, progress. Progress. You make progress. You progress. You grow. You. Take your journey, right? You use opportunities. This word can also mean using opportunities. Opportunities to love people. Opportunities to help people. You know, whatever. And it's also about your life, you know, regulating and conducting your life. You know, as a student or a worker, you have to plan your life and organize your life and, you know, do your homework and you regulate your life. So... You know, we receive Christ with humility, and we say by faith, and then we continue, and we progress with Him. So, uh, I guess one of the things I've been thinking about is, how do we grow in Christ? You know, uh, recently I was reading in a book, uh, reading some, uh, actually, Christian psychology book. It's quite possible to come, it's quite possible to come to church... It's quite possible to study the Bible, but you're not really growing. It's possible to not grow very well with Christ. It's a little bit like um, if you're not exercising. You know, if you don't exercise to be a sumo wrestler, you will lose. Or if you don't act, if you don't practice serum wrestling, you will lose. Right. Or if you don't practice volleyball or soccer, you will not do well, right? So here, we have to continue to progress and grow in Christ. So I'm going to try to talk about some things about growing in Christ. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, so a few months ago, I mentioned this verse. Philippians 2, 12-13 says, Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, because God is at work in us. And we have to realize that, you know, God is helping us, but we still have to work hard. You still have to train hard. You have to study the Bible. You have to pray. You have to do all these things as a Christian. Uh, now, I would say this, though. There's also a balance. There's a balance. Uh, it's very, like I said, it's very possible. You could study the Bible. You could pray, get up early in the morning and pray, but you're not living a balanced life. So each one of us should have a balanced life. Um, we should spend time with family. We should spend time with God. We should 
spend time at the church, and, and balance things, right? Um, okay. But, but in a sense, we, have to, we have, do have to work hard. I mean, we can't just be lazy, right? Uh, as like a tree rooted in the ground, we have to, we have free will. You know, a tree, a tree doesn't exactly have free will, but a tree will send the roots down to find the water. And we have free will. So you have a choice. You have a choice. Will you send your roots down? You have a choice. Each person here has a choice. Are you going to study the Bible for yourself? Are you going to spend time in prayer? Are you going to share Christ with your friends? Are you going to have fellowship? And of course, you've chosen, you've chosen today to come today to worship God. So that's good. That's putting your roots down. Uh, I know Becca and James, uh, James and Becca have a Bible study. That's great. Those of you come to the Bible study that can, right, and study the Word. Um, when you have time in the morning or the evening or the afternoon, pray, right? That's like putting your roots down every day. It's like training yourself to be a good sumo wrestler. Okay, next. All right, so the second point, rooted and built up. And actually, there's three words. It's interesting. In this verse, it says rooted, built up, and it also says strengthened in some Bible. Strengthened. Like strengthening your muscles, right? So, um, interesting, the Greek word is rhizoo, rhizoo. And that, that's actually, there's an English word, rhizome. A rhizome is like a small root, right? So it comes from the Greek word. Rhizoo, or zeo, means to put the roots down. So the, Bi the Bible is telling you, put your roots down. Grow your roots, all right? And you do that to be firm, you know, to be firm, established. You fix and establish yourself in the Word of God, in prayer, in coming to church. You are thoroughly grounded. So you need to ask yourselves, are, do you know what God is saying to you? Do you know what the Bible says? Uh, next week we'll talk more about this, but there are a lot of people, there are a lot of people who study the Bible, but they don't really know a balanced view of what the Bible is saying. Now, uh, I'm going to jump ahead, but I've been reading this book, uh, this book is called 12 Christian Beliefs That Can Drive You Crazy. You Can Become Michisoyo. <laughs> You can become crazy. Now, Koreans like that word, I think. Right? And this is by two Christian psychologists. And it's very interesting. In the introduction of the book, uh, they say that there are lots of Christians that come to their office for counseling. And they said, often, often it's the Christians that have studied the Bible a lot they know, they know a lot of things about the Bible, but they have some wrong assumptions about the Bible. So often, it, it's a little bit strange. There are people who are having problems growing, or they're having problems with their marriage, or with their family, or trusting God, or something, because they know a lot about the Bible, but it's not balanced. It's not balanced, and there are some false assumptions. Like I mentioned, philosophy, wrong philosophy, uh, myths, and wives' tales, and human tradition. So often, another way of saying it is, there are things that are like a half-truth, half-truth. And I want you to think about this. What are things that are like a half-truth? For example, in this book, in this book they mentioned, sometimes a pastor... Sometimes a pastor will tell a Christian, because you have some problems, they say, just spend more time with God. Spend more time with God. But that's like a half-truth. It's half-true and it's half-false. Why? Because the Bible does say we're supposed to spend time with God. God is supposed to be first, right? We're supposed to pray to God, confess our sins. But the Bible also says spend time with other Christians. Spend time with your family. 
spend time in a Bible study.